Hi, and thank you for joining us for the Always Right podcast. As always, I am Carissa DeLay, and this is Jamie Vendera. And today in this podcast, we're going to talk about redundancy. Yes. Yes, we're going to talk about redundancy. Is it old yet? We're going to talk about redundancy. Redundant, redundancy? Are we talking about that? <laughs> yes, redundancy. Okay. Yeah, got it. <laughs> right. You know what? I've written a lot of books, and one of my best-selling books of all time is Raise Your Voice. Thousands of thousands. I don't even know how many copies I've sold of that. It's the worst book I've ever written because it's so redundant. And I haven't uh, – it's funny. I haven't had Rich Dalglish edit it or my ultimate breathing workout yet because it's like it's so massive and there's so much stuff I got to do and I know I got to get it done. But I, I repeat myself so many times and I've actually, that's been pointed out to people uh, by, uh, to me, but I'm like, yeah, I'm going to edit it. And I swear to you, Chris, the most of them said, no, please don't, please don't. I like it for that type of book. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Because if I'm teaching you, if I'm teaching a student about singing and I'm like, you gotta, you gotta bear down for support. You gotta bear down for support. I say that again and again and again. So that type of training book redundancy in that situation isn't so bad. I still think I've overdone it. In a fiction thing, nope. No. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, no. Even when you were you you hit the nail on the head there with the whole like because you're teaching, you almost have to be redundant. Uh, you have to be repetitious because I mean they they say that the first time you hear something, you retain like what two percent or something like that. Yeah. Second time it's like eight percent, and then third time is sixty percent. It's like so the more you hear it, the more you retain it in a teaching atmosphere, in a teaching, like I'm trying to get you to remember something atmosphere. When you're writing fiction or you're writing a descriptive thing, say you're writing a college essay about yourself or you're doing fiction to describe a situation, you do not want to be redundant in the word words that you're using. Obviously, certain words are going to be repeated, said, um, the, like he, she, like all these different words that do repeat. But if you're using a word, um, like calibration, or you're using a word that's describing, uh, the color yellow, don't use that seven times to describe the word yellow, find another way. Correct. And there, you know, and this, just so you understand, say a character has a broken leg and, and he's like, man, I can't wait to get this cast off. And his buddy's like, yeah, we'll be playing basketball in no time. And he looks, he's like, no, they said it's permanent. So then you know there's going to be something wrong with his leg. So maybe next chapter he's like, he, he kind of fell down the stairs. So we've set it up. So you're mentioning it a couple of times so you understand this person has something wrong with their leg uh, and they had surgery and it's not reparable. It's going to be the way it's like. But if every flipping check, you're like, here comes peg leg, here comes peg leg. That's going to get old really quick. You're going to be like, yeah. oh my gosh, I know. Can you shut up about it already? Right. Well, and I had someone read it, like give a review on my book. And, and this kind of helped me a little bit in the first, she's, they're like, the character's always on her phone. And this was kind of pre what we are now. Like today, everybody's on their phone. So that's, you know, whatever. But this person had a role that was quite important that her phone would be ringing. So there was a reason she was always on her phone. Like there were people messaging. In this new book, people are texting. Like one, the, the killer is a texter. He likes to send his next victim messages. So there is a texting per. There is a reason to be on the phone, like you know. But I'm not gonna be like you know. I'm doing this like oh, they picked up their flip phone. You already know they got a flip phone, you know. <laughs> they got a flip phone. I can't well, do that. Well, one of the one of the officers has a flip phone because we know he's older. He's not gonna be using the most modern version of a phone. He's gonna have like the most basic thing just to get by. He's not, he's going to still write on paper versus his uh, younger partner. Who's going to have still on dialogue. everything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's still got the basic plan. <laughs> but you know what? I don't consider that redundancy though. And I know you don't either because it's, it's setting it up. It's like scary movie. Like, Do you want to play a game or whatever it is? You know, you watch like it the other, I just watched it the other night, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Scary. Or what's the, what's not Name? scary movie. What's the real one? Well, there's scream. Scream. It, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Scream. Which <laughs> my youngest and I, we just watched that. She's, I was like, what are you in the mood to watch? She's like, I'm kind of in the mood to watch Scream. I'm like, okay. <clears throat> so we did, which we've watched all of them. We love the Scream series, of course. The I do too. Movie. I still like the scary movie ones though. <laughs> oh yeah. The scary, the, the, the play on yeah. it, the whole like comedy about it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I think the one I can remember is like the, uh, the Michael Jackson one where they're doing a play on the ring. Where you get the oh, phone call. Yes. <laughs> I'm 
Michael Jackson and me. Yeah. <laughs> Remember that one? Uh, well, I'm going to introduce my kids to that. I'm gonna, I don't know if they've actually watched the scary movie ones. You mean like you want to watch a real horror movie? Yes. You want you scary? Like, you like scream? We're watching okay. this at night. And yes. then get them all psyched out for scary movies and yeah. be like... And they'll be like, Mom! <laughs> they've what? Watched, they've watched all the scary movies that they'd be making fun of. So they would totally get everything. You can't be like... Uh, you, you, I know you love Scream, so did you know that, that they made another series? Uh, oh, yeah. This, yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, we we, that. We've watched The Ring. They've watched The Ring. Like, listen, we raise our kids on scary movies. We don't want our and we Good explained parents. like makeup. They understood from a very early age it was makeup. Not to be scared, just enjoy the art. So all right, so redundancy. All right, so there are the ways that I can correct the, as far as me personally, what I do. I use gram I when I'm writing, I use Grammarly a lot. And Grammarly, if you pay for the premium, which is totally worth it because I'm a college student, when I'm trying to make sure there's no plagiarism, make sure my words aren't being, um, like, I can even set it up to be like an APA or, you know, like a different type of style, a Chicago style or whatever my professor's asking for. Grammarly lets me do that. By the way, we are not sponsored by Grammarly, but I do use it. And... Um, I don't belong to, I don't, uh, I'm not only do I am the president for hair club for men, but I'm also a, a member. A client. Yes. Okay. No, but I, I literally love grammar. Like, if there's two things I could push, honestly, that are product wise would be Apple product and, yeah. and Grammarly. Grammarly has helped me because with writing, I literally have a Grammarly document for every single chapter of my book. Wow. It has it listed up there and I can set the tone of every book. You can literally set what type of voice you want to use. Like, do I want it to sound confident? Do I want it to sound uh, a little more um, passive? You know, how do I want this to come across? I, you can set it up. You know, you've been on me for well over a year to get Grammarly, uh, probably because of my my professional text-to-speech skills. Yes. However, <laughs> hearing this, you talk about this. I think we ought to eventually do a podcast and you talk about like, because Just now grammar. you got me interested. I'm like, really? Well, then I could finish uh, like the Siren series. I could go and like have that tone just to make it a little quicker where I'm so busy. Yeah. Uh, like right here. So, yes, I, I'm, I'm interested now. I want to yeah, watch that so podcast. Like, so like when I'm writing words, I love using words that may like, oh, man, I don't want to use the word understanding every single time. So I'll write the word understanding. I double click on the word understanding. Grammarly will give me a list of things that mean the same thing. And it gives you the type like it'll tell you. Um, different ways the word understanding can be used and how you'd want to use it. So it's not just a bunch of thesaurus type words, um, but it will tell you like understanding if you're talking about, I understand you, or is this understanding like I have an understanding? So which one do you want to use? Yeah, well, I also think it would be cool because if say a character had, like you had a character who's kind of smart ass and they're like, sounds like a personal problem. Mm -hmm. And they use that, they always saying that, okay, you would want that quite a bit, but when does it reach the point of redundance? So I guess mm -hmm. you you could go through Grammarly and be like, I said that 27 times in this 400 page book. Yeah, let me cut that in half. Where is it really prominent? Right. So another thing you can do, like once I'm done with Grammarly, I take and I once I format everything's good to go, I copy paste into my Word document. And so I have once I have the whole thing in my Word document, you just hit the little search thing on your Word document and you type in a phrase, see how many times you used it. What Word document do you use? What app? I use the Word app. I use Microsoft, Microsoft Word. Microsoft Word? Okay. Yeah, because you can use Microsoft Word on your Apple. Yeah, I can't. You know, I started out with Microsoft Word, and I just, I just been doing Google Docs for years uh, because that's how Daniel and I started writing fiction. Mm -hmm. I've looked at it. I mean, have you compared them? This is another what? podcast. I would love to discuss Microsoft Word versus Google Docs. Which is right. written, not saying one is better than the other, but no. I, I use Google Docs with you. I use go like I use Google Docs with you. Yeah. Um, when it comes to like certain things we're working on and we're just editing together, um, I recently work with a girl who's a senior at um, she's a senior at the the high school here. Oh my gosh, my kids are messaging me. Sorry if it's dinging. You told her about Dave Kegner, didn't you? No, I didn't. I'm not going to okay. send them that picture until this weekend. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now you're going to make me down re-download the Microsoft Word. Uh, well, so yeah, so so I worked with a student and we were kind of working on her paper that she was sending to uh, for a college thing. And oh my gosh, listen. Oh, stop. I already got it on my phone. Hmm. Yeah. 
I'll tell you one I had that I wasn't crazy about. Um, it had a little elephant on it. My partner made me get it, and it was like 120 a year. Oh, shoot. What was it called? Where are your subscriptions at? Uh, that would be in, if you go to your yeah, settings. I found it. Uh, Evernote. And so, I mean, I, I don't want to, a lot of people use Evernote. I won't dissuade it. Uh, What's Evernote? It's kind of like another Microsoft Word or a Google Drive, but I, I just didn't get into it. And for one, I'm not being, it's not even that expensive. It's not like uh, personal. Yeah, it is. $149, uh, professionals $149.99 a year, $549 a month. Uh, Word is free. Yeah, I see that's free. That blows my mind because think about back in the day. Um, I would buy Microsoft Word 2000, then I'd have to get the upgrade two years later and buy it all over again just to keep it up. So that drove me nuts. And that's eventually why, about 2008, I quit using Microsoft Word. I was like, I'm tired of running and buying the software and putting the floppy disk in, or the CD in my drive to put it on my computer. Of course, it's, you know, that's ancient times. So. I will check it out. I will play with it so well, we can make comparisons. The thing is, whenever so so whenever I plug from Grammarly to Word Doc, it'll do a whole nother re edit for me. Really? Yes. Yeah, so Word will you can go into the settings and have Word do um, like an edit for you. Like you can set up its editing uh, tools, which we can talk about that more in detail on another podcast. But yeah, so I do that, and what it does is it helps me. Like I'm going to go in there and see how many times that I use the word he in a sentence where, and I'm going to go and you could literally type it in and it'll tell you how many times and you just hit the arrow button. You can, okay, that one's good. That one's good. That one's good. Then you can go in and correct that one. Just so, if you're talking about Michael Jackson, you go, he, don't erase that one. Cause that, that belongs. Oh yeah. That's supposed to say, I guess. <laughs> okay. I'm such a dork. Um, but, yeah, that's what I was saying. It's like you, you can find ways. Just remember to check your, like what words do you typically in conversation overly say? And feel like, man, I think I've wrote this word a lot. And if you like where I sub, I uh, separate all the chapters, it's not going to like if I'm writing in Grammarly, one whole chapter, if there's a redundant paragraph in the chapter, Grammarly will say, hey, this seems like you've repeated yourself. It will tell me you've you've already said this in this chapter and it'll show me where. And this so, is good for self editing to prepare mm -hmm. for your actual editor right. to save you money, to not make them work harder. Get your documents set as clean as possible before you send it off to them. Yeah, and if you find yourself like, man, I've, I've said that. I, like, you, there's a word you really like. Just write it down or be like, how, <laughs> go through your whatever document source that you're using. I don't know if you can do that in Google Doc. I'm, I mean, I, I've used Google Doc with you, but I've not done it as far as for the writing. Google uh, Word Docs are kind of required for my college papers. So I just kind of stick with it and how I have to make sure that things are in there properly. But... So with your Microsoft Word, does it save on your phone or are you hooked to a cloud account like Google? Well, it's on my laptop, but it's on all of my devices. So if I have the app on my phone, it's in my sign-in. So I can pull up anything where I'm like, if I'm, if I have it saved on my Word thing here, and then it's going to be on my phone, it's going to be on my iPad. So any, anything that has my iCloud gotcha. account that it's signed into, it has that. So yeah, that makes gotcha. that a lot. Yeah. No. So like, what about you when it comes to your series and redundancy? <laughs> you know what? I've had to literally rich Douglish. Honestly, I learned a lot from him. And in the beginning, when I had all those pen names, he's like, man, that Jamie Lynn Saunders, he repeats, you know, this word uh, a lot. I picked up on it from him. Of course, he corrected uh, that since he was editing it. But going forward, I would pay attention. And I think what would catch my uh, attention is if I use a word like um, f blimey, flipping crazies, I'm just making stuff up. But if it was a phrase like that, I'd be like, okay, I'm going to remember I said that. So it's not that I've checked for it, but mm -hmm. you know, now I'm, wa I'm watching this podcast. It makes me want to, you know, be a little more <laughs> focused when I, I do it. I'll get my ADHD. Yeah. Yeah. I use Grammarly. But I will catch that if for something I'm saying or a way that I word it, like, you know, like it sounds like a personal problem or, you know, Galton. With, yes. <laughs> phrases. It's a, yes. It's a, and, and you, the thing with me is I, I remember them like, wait a minute. I've said that somewhere before. And in that case, I have done a search. Where yes, did I yeah. say that? <laughs> Where did mm -hmm. I say there was a speckle of uh, like a purple in, in their eye and the green? 
Sit and, that's, and so that's why I always, when I'm done with a chapter, I immediately transfer it over to a Word doc. So I'm actually saving it in two cloud versions. I'm saving it on my Word and I'm saving it on my Grammarly. They both exist in case one crashes. You know what I mean? Yep. In case one gets deleted somehow. And so like if I'm writing, I'm like, oh, what did I say about them? I can go to my Word doc and say, type it in. Like, okay, that's what I call them. Also, when you are done, this is and this has nothing to do with redundancy, but it's really smart to go through your character lists and make sure you've named them all correctly. I, I, you would not believe how many times I have misspelled, like, especially if you're coming up with bizarre names like Estradane or Eve Onan or Pim the Knife or something. I will have to go back and check it. And Pim the Knife, you'd be like, oh, you won't forget that. So, you know, I'm Pim. They call me the Knife. But there's times I've said Pim the Knight. Yeah. Because it was olden times. Yeah, and you I don't just type the think... whole thing out. Just type the beginning part and it'll bring you all of them. You could double check. Just hit your little arrow and it just scrolls right down and you could double and, check that. And if you got spell check on your phone and you're flying and you go like K N I F T instead of E, it might not change it back to knife. It might change it to knight. Yeah, so mm -hmm. you definitely you have to double check everything. Mm -hmm. Not just that, uh, what Wait, they're wearing. Do uh, you if they type wear... your book on your phone? I do. Nowadays, I'm literally, uh, and I, you know, it's goofy. Like I'm, I'm doing this with you on my podcast on my iPad and I have an um, iPad magic keyboard so I can type. I did that for you because you like the sound. Yes. No, but, <laughs> but there's sometimes I'm flying. If I'm, uh, if I, if I'm in that writer's mood, but I'll be laying in bed. And I'll be doing that. Or if I'm driving, I'll turn on text to speech. Yes, I know I have a lot of typos to correct when I do that, but I will try no to comment. talk plainly. So I was made fun of last you night in a Dr. Box you meeting. A book that is just text to typing, no matter what it says, just let it go. <laughs> you I get just let it roll and be like, "This is what this is what text to typing creates," and then make it just like a like a blooper book. <laughs> Like, this is what I meant to say, but this is what text to talk to made me say. <laughs> uh, good. So don't be redundant. Yeah. So, like, you know, that's the same thing. It's almost like um, songs have uh, chorus lines. Those are not redundant because you're looking for the chorus. But, like, sometimes there are songs that you're like, <laughs> are there any other words in this book, in the song? Like, Yeah. Or, God, I, hate to, I hate to bring this up, but I remember a church we used to go to. Uh, you know, they do like the latest CCM songs and it'll be like, Jesus, 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 holy, holy, holy. That's fine. You get to it. But we had this one uh, keyboard player and singer. I swear to you, if the song was three minutes long, it would end up being six minutes long because she'd be like, holy, holy, holy. Jesus. And she kicked back into the course. I'm like, that's not serving anything. It's just redundancy in it. Like... I can't stand redundancy in a song, in a book, and no mm -hmm. disrespect, but it's like, pay attention. You're going to lose your, your audience. audience. You're going to lose your audience. Agreed. Agreed. All right. So, yeah, we have some exciting stuff coming up. We've discussed some things that we're going to bring more information to you in some upcoming podcasts. We're going to start a series on uh, the book club yep. where we're going to read books. We're going to give you a few weeks to purchase the books where we're going to... Uh, on our end, for if you purchase a Vendera book that we're going to be reading, you're going to get a cheaper rate. Uh, and then like three weeks after that, you'll be able to uh, join us for the podcast where we discuss it and you can like and join in. Uh, we're also going to do a couple lives. Uh, we talked about even having Katie on. Maybe Katie can go live with us and then maybe you can order her books and she might be able to send you out some copies, signed copies. Um, so yeah, a lot of cool stuff. That, what was some of the other things? Did we talk about anything else? I'm sure we did, but, you know, I saw a squirrel in my mind went that way. Oh, my gosh, yes. We talked about, like, the copywriting going deeper into ISBNs yeah. to make sure that you really understand whether – if you're not self-publishing, it's not a big deal. But if you are, man, you, you want to make sure you do everything correctly so mm -hmm. your book is accessible to, to get uh, bought by libraries. Um, yes. You know, it can be purchased all over the world. So there are a yeah, lot of steps that you want to go – yeah, that's something that, that's important because I remember, and we'll, like I said, we'll discuss this, but like, I remember when I went to the library to see if they would order my book, they said, well, is your book with this printing company? Because if it's not, by law, and by the laws un abiding in their grant, the way their grant was written up for what they could purchase, they couldn't purchase from a, like a secondary printer. They can only print, buy books from a certain type of printing company. 
Yeah. So yeah. that's easy. Boker PC in all of that we'll, we'll cover. And it's, yeah. it's not that hard. As soon as you set it up and go through the, all that Baker and Taylor and all that, boom, you're set up anyway. Mm -hmm. And I've actually had people, I had a, a company call me, Hey, I want to order some books from you. And I did it last time. I said, no, you didn't. You ordered through, you know, th this revenue, st this Avenue. I, I didn't handle any of that. Well, it, it's harder for me to do that. And you'll get a lot of this. Uh, well, I will actually talk about that. I don't suggest you do that because some they'll be like, we'll pay you in three months. Oh, we didn't sell any. So there was an old yeah. standard publishing like, oh, well, we didn't sell these books. So we're going to ditch them in a trash can. We're not going to mm -hmm. pay for them. That's just that's the way it is. So yeah. we want to protect you against all of that. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So just, uh, you know, kind of keep in mind some of the things that we've said when you're you're writing. But the key is to always write. Don't stop writing. Um, and, uh, hopefully we've helped you a little bit through the, the podcast and previous podcasts and, uh, upcoming podcasts for you. Maybe they will be your, your guiding and maybe we're just like some kind of, you know, I know goofy inspiration for you. I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe well, I'm know. the goofy, you're the inspiration. So we're mm, good to go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But thank you for listening again. Uh, this is the always right podcast. You could always email us at always right podcast at gmail.com. You can reach out to us on our socials if you have questions or ideas or, you know, just in general want to, you know, give a shout out. Um, until next time, I am Carissa DeLay and this is Jamie Vendera. We'll see you Jamie soon. <laughs> All right. Thanks for listening. Jamie Vendera. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Something like that. Let's go. <laughs>